XYZ asks, is there a possibility that part of the ruling, if you overcome the appeal, will be that the society must make an announcement outlining the details of the case to its members, as well as an apology to Candice? The answer to that is no. Our civil court system is set up to award money damages. This case does not involve an injunction. It involves past harm to Candace. Therefore, that kind of relief is not available to us through this system. What we told the jury and what we see, not just in these cases, but in other kinds of cases all across civil justice, uh, is that the attention that's brought to the situation from the kind of case that Candace has brought and her courage in publicizing what happened to her and the jury's statement on the policies that caused Candace her injury, that is the incentive through a financial award for change. Tower agent wants to know, why did you not take this to court sooner? Why wait so long? never intended to go to court in the first place. Uh, that was the farthest thing, um, the farthest thing that I ever wanted. I, I um, never wanted any monetary value out of this at all. What I had wanted was for the organization to um, listen and to be open to uh, ideas and advice or ideas that would help protect children in the future. Um, after not being listened to um, and kind of being turned away and shunned for those ideas, um, I didn't know where else to turn. Uh, they had asked me specifically to prove that it happened to me before, um, before they would listen to me. So, um, I think that that process is what what made it take so long for me to, to take action. And, and I'd like to comment on that because I don't agree at all that it took so long. And in fact, most uh, child sex abuse victims, uh, all, uh, at least many, many, do not have either the emotional or the psychological uh, state of mind that allows them to come forward and actually get involved in something like uh, the litigation process until well into their 30s and often even to their 40s. Uh, the law in California, even though we're seeking to change it, allows people to their 26th birthday to bring a child sex abuse came, uh, case. Candace was well within that. Uh, so I, I don't agree with the statement that it was a long wait. I think it was actually in the great curve somewhat early. Idonomo, Balaam's ass and mind blown would like to know, has the Watchtower tried to make any kind of settlement offers either before or during the appeals process? The answer to that is a no, but the main reason that there have been no settlement discussions is that when Candace first came to me at the beginning of this journey. It was clear that she wanted attention drawn to the policies that have allowed child sex abusers to remain protected within the congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses. It wasn't about money. She had gone to them in Los Angeles, she had gone to them in Fremont and said, you got to change the policies. They documented her question, which is, when molesters who have been identified are in the congregation and are kept secret, what's to prevent them from hiding who they really are? And that they wrote down for us, that was her uh, goal to change that policy when she came to me. And until the policy is changed one way or the other, uh, there's not really much point in talking settlement. Vidiot wants to know, is the larger American legal community beyond Team Conti paying closer than usual attention to the way this case is playing out? 
judging by the amount of publicity that has been generated within the legal community, I think there is a higher level of recognition about Candace's case than many other cases. On the other hand, I don't think that the first case of Jehovah's Witnesses has reached the level of attention nationally that the thousands of cases against the Roman Catholic Church have reached. Uh, I think that we're still in the process of spreading the light, if you will, that has been shining primarily on the Catholic Church around the many, many other institutions, including Jehovah's Witnesses. Have you heard of any others who will be taking the same legal action against the society that you took? Christ alone asks. I know a lot of people have made inquiries and several lawyers have contacted me with regard to questions, but because of all of the legal obstacles, uh, varies from state to state, but all, every state has some legal obstacles to these kinds of cases, uh, I have not heard of any that have actually been filed and prosecuted. Hoffman asks, how would you describe the contact and communication between your legal team and the society's lawyers? Most of the time, the relationships between the lawyers were very professional, very gracious, very civil, very polite. Occasionally, uh, there would be a little show of uh, some sort of temper or irritation on the part of one or the other of us over something that may not have been communicated properly to us or to the other side. But by and large, uh, I would say that the lawyers were very professional in their treatment of each other. One of the biggest mistakes I think that the defense team made was they didn't extend to Candace Conti, the true victim in this case, the same respect that they paid to her lawyer. Anne O'Malley asks, please could you clarify how the appeal bond works? Does the society have to pay the full $17 million now, or just the premium? If their appeal fails, do they have to pay the insurance company the $17 million in addition to the premium payments? This question of securing a judgment during the time that it's on appeal is the same whether it's Jehovah's Witnesses, Dow Chemical, or any other party who is appealing an adverse judgment. The law allows them to secure the judgment in one of two ways. Either they put cash or cash equivalent in an account under the supervision of the court, or they can get an insurance company, in this case it's Travelers, and pay a premium and get a bond, like a bail bond, that guarantees the payment. If at the end of the appeals process, the judgment is not paid within 30 days, the party who has won the judgment and won the appeal has the right to bring a claim directly against the insurance company. And the insurance company can then go chase their uh, annuity payer or their premium payer for the balance. But the main purpose of the law is to protect the plaintiff, the claimant, the person who has obtained the judgment, make sure they get promptly paid at the end of the case and let the other folks sort it out amongst themselves. As of this time, all Jehovah's Witnesses, all Watchtower has to do is pay a premium for the bond. Belbab asks, what principles or personal motives, biblical or otherwise, led you to pursue the case to the end without wanting to settle out of court? I think what really compelled me to not think about settling was the fact that so many other children 
are at risk when you have like policies that that hide these people. Uh, this is a this is an issue that needs to be addressed, that needs to change. And I felt in my little own way that I could take a stand and come forward with what had happened to me. And if I could possibly in any way make a difference um, to change those things, that it would really be worth it in the end. And I, I think that's, that's really been my, my motivation throughout the whole thing.